Solana versus Cardano, it is a tale as old as time. I heard this narrative all last bull run in 2021. Um, but let's break it down. Let's talk about what are the key differences and similarities between Solana and Cardano to figure out which one might be the best investment for you. And these blockchains are very similar in a lot of ways, but they're very, very different in a lot of other very important ways. Okay, so let's break it all down, put it out here so you can take a look and see how these blockchains are growing in this late half of 2023, heading into 2024. Solana is known for its super fast lightning transactions. It has an awesome new partnership with Shopify, which I'm guessing because of the speed of their transactions, and it's touted to do stuff north of 50,000 transactions per second. This is the main unique selling point of Solana. It is a hyper fast, hyper capable blockchain that can do a lot of, it, it's basically fast transactions is what it's trying to do, and a lot of transactions. Solana is a proof of stake, but also a proof of history chain. So essentially it's like the proof of history is what makes it able to do so much TPS. I'm not sure what proof of history is. I don't really know a whole ton about Solana, but it is a proof of stake blockchain, much like Cardano, and uses what's called proof of history to do these massive amounts of fast transactions. So Solana has this idea of this main use case being like lightning fast transactions. And then last bull run, the huge thing on Solana was a lot of DeFi stuff and a lot of NFT stuff. Also their blockchain uses, I think Rust or some other simpler languages to use compared to Cardano's Haskell. So they have a much easier time developing and the, the you know developers migrated from Ethereum to Solana to build these um, quick code based solutions to have DeFi on there and NFTs. And this really exploded last bull run. I've seen a lot of people trading NFTs on Solana, a lot of people doing DeFi much like they do it on Ethereum L2s, they do the same thing on Solana. The big reason why I personally am not in Solana and another con of a lot of people for Solana is back in when it was starting, when they did the coin ICO before the last bull run, Solana was a huge VC chain, very centralized and not really seemed like for the people, right? So there's a balance to be had with VCs and they are necessary and they help entrepreneurs and they help users have a great time. But when the Sol token, the token of Solana was released, like 30% was in the Solana hands and then 40% was in the hands of VCs and inside investors. And only a very, very small percent, like five or 10% was given or sold to the public in public sale. So this is not a great thing if you're in crypto for the decentralization aspect. If you're in crypto just, you know, to like make a little bit of money or buy a little NFT or use it as a you know, use it as a payment network. There's a lot of reasons why Solana would be a good fit for you. But if it was for the decentralization aspect, Solana was not doing very well at that in the last bull run. As of today, I did a little bit of research this past weekend on how Solana decentralization is doing, and it actually actually looks to be doing quite a bit better. Nakamoto coefficients ranging between 20 and 30 on a given day. It seems like they have about 3000 nodes out there. And it seems like the token distribution is spread along a larger population. So in the last bull run, Solana brought in a lot of um, crypto users, a lot of holders, and a lot more people believe in the sold token. So that has naturally filtered some of the tokens away from the venture capitalists, away from the Solana Foundation, and into the hands of people, people that might be interested in running nodes, people that might be interested in using Solana just as like a cool blockchain or NFT projects that need sold a mint. So this distribution has naturally happened. And I do think Solana is getting more and more decentralized every year, although the beginning was not super great. Um, the beginning does have impact to decide whether it's like a, a, a security or a commodity. So that's just something to weigh in your mind as you're looking at, well, how did this start, right? It didn't start very decentralized. It started pretty centralized and it's working toward a centralization but that does impact classification on what this asset was at the beginning. Don't get me wrong, I say all these things about decentralization, but Solana is not a bad chain. It has a lot of great use cases, and I think its Shopify partnership is one of those amazing use cases that it can do really well at. I think it has the ability to help big companies do a lot of very big, very quick, high, high throughput transactions for customers, and I think it has a, a low transaction fee way to do that, and it has a relatively easy way to do that. Now, if the blockchain goes down, that will be bad for companies, but we see that happen every now and then, like a company's website goes down or this and that, and it's not a huge deal. It is a big deal when you're worried about decentralization of the network and keeping something running 24 seven. But you know, if you're just like running a website and you wanna pay with 
crypto, Solana can be a great solution for that. The last thing I want to say before moving to Cardano is that there are a lot of narratives around Solana that I think the Solana group will have to navigate um, well. And so FTX was on Solana. Solana had a lot of things coming out from developers about pumping fake NFT volume. Um, so these are just things that if I was invested in Solana, I would want to see, kind of understand. Like, I don't want to invest in a blockchain that has a little bit of fake NFT volume going on um, or that had like major crashes and major um, like company uh, failures and stuff. Not, not, and none of this is the Solana blockchain's fault. It's just unfortunate things that happen. Cardano, we have our own things. Like people complain about Catalyst or we have, you know, entrepreneurs like rugging people as well in Cardano. So we'll talk about Cardano's faults as well. But there are things to watch out for. And these narratives, I feel like will not die super easily if you're a Solana holder. Now, moving into Cardano. Cardano is also a proof of stake um, blockchain. It's actually one of the first to pull off proof of stake in a very, very well manner. And Cardano is based on the peer reviewed method. So where Solana started out like a little bit centralized, build and learn, much like the software development life cycle, like build, break, figure out what users want and build really quickly. Cardano has taken kind of like a slower approach. Cardano's whole thing is from the start, we want to be decentralized. We want to be a commodity. We want to make it so this can be a global payment network and we want to make it to where nobody can really take it away from us. So just two different ideas behind the unique selling point. And from that unique selling point, Cardano was built on Haskell, very hard, a harder language than Rust to kind of learn. Not that it makes it better, but it just is a different style of working. The peer reviewed method and academic papers helping the blockchain industry that is just a different way of going about it. And Cardano is almost verifiably decentralized from the beginning because of that. With this slower approach, Cardano is also not behind in development, but its TPS is not as high. Cardano's TPS is probably, if you were to really crank it up, somewhere between like one and 100, 200, 300 transactions per second is what it could handle. Cardano is working on like outside L2s, kind of like in the Ethereum way, but not L2s, it's working on rolling up its UTXOs. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. But the transactions per second for Cardano is a lot less than Solana, or the two are touted to be less than each other because you know we don't really know what the, these TPS are accurate. Nobody's really pushing these to the limit. And a lot of times these blockchains get congested with a lot less transactions per second than they say. Cardano's main use case is gonna be that global financial payment network. It aims to be the alternative to a lot of the paper currencies that we're using. And it wants to, you know, it's it's just like an Ethereum. It has a lot of uh, global P2P transactions happening, uh, lending, borrowing, DeFi, NFTs, something that anyone anywhere can access to use their money as they wish to use it, whether it's to grow their money, spend their money, or send their money to a friend. Something that governments and other people cannot take away. Um, Cardano is also coming a lot along the Bitcoin philosophy line. It's used a lot of Bitcoin's proof of work ideas into its proof of stake Ouroboros consensus mechanism. All right. So Cardano has got all that going for it. It also started out a lot more decentralized. A lot of the tokens were given to the public in public sales and, you know, through staking rewards. And then a small percentage was keeping for the team or the Cardano foundation or for some of these starting entities, but the overall breakdown between Cardano and Solana is that Cardano did start a lot more decentralized, which is helping it to kind of fit more into that commodity category. Much like Solana, year over year, Cardano is becoming more and more decentralized with its stake pool operators growing, its delegators dispersing away from major pools and accessing smaller pools. While you will get lower staking rewards, Cardano is doing a great job at being decentralized and maintaining decentralization. I believe it has an MAV in the 20s as well, just like Solana. So these chains are neck and neck as far as how they're becoming more decentralized year over year and putting this as a priority for their users. Some of the tough narratives Cardano is going to have to overcome for the next bull run is no major partnerships. I know we hear about like the Africa um, government using Cardano. I haven't heard much about that. I don't really know if that's happening. Um, but also Cardano has had a lot of things changing. Some projects have moved away from Cardano to other chains. Um, we have recently had a lot of NFT projects decide to either sell and sell their, their IP to other projects, basically stopping work. 
some have rugs, some have, you know, um, catalysts was a big area of debate over the past week. So Cardano has its own narratives it'll have to get over. A lot of people call it the ghost chain or like that it's years behind Ethereum or that it's not fast. Um, and so there, Cardano has its own narratives, much like Solana that it needs to overcome for the next bull run. If you were here in 2021, you will probably know that Cardano has never had downtime, which is one of its main selling points for those looking for that decentralized global payment network. So this is one spot where Solana and Cardano do differ. Basically, when you really break it down into like the, what the news is kind of said in your head, Solana is like the fast chain and Cardano is the peer reviewed chain. Solana did have a couple breakdowns, but is working to be more decentralized and better for its community. Cardano was always decentralized, but that has taken a toll causing it to be a little bit slower, causing it to go slower for peer review, causing it to kind of like slow down and analyze its decisions, which has limited growth probably. Um, both chains are good, both have different unique selling points, and because of that, both have different unique users that really enjoy using the chain. People who are probably more interested in the Bitcoin philosophy of decentralization probably would prefer Cardano. People who are more into the new age of loans and lending and getting crazy amounts of APY, they, they probably suit better on the Solana chain just for different reasons. And that's okay. Different people have different requirements and risk appetites and things that they want to do. And that's how these two user bases kind of break down in my mind. The odds are that in the next bull run, both of these chains are going to do really well. And I think we, we've seen that um, because a lot of people thought Solana was not going to survive after the FTX collapse. Solana has done a great job at reviving and maintaining its user base. Um, Cardano has been doing the same thing in the bear market. And I think towards the end of this year and early 2024, we can see the tides kind of turn in these two major L1s. Because so that's what these two are. These are leading L1s who are constantly between 5 and 15 on the total crypto ranking. Um, they have big market caps, somewhere around the 10 to $20 billion range. And both have been touted as like, potential successors to Ethereum. Much like Ethereum has kind of taken the iteration of moving technology from Bitcoin to Ethereum to smart contracts, both of these chains are kind of taking Ethereum's ideas and evolving them into a, a tier three, third generation blockchain. So both of these, I think, have the potential to do well in the next bull run. Um, purely investment wise, you can probably make great returns on both. Both are sitting around the same market cap. Both probably have the same ability to be competing L1s in the next bull run. Basically, the reason why you would choose one over the other is fundamentals. Cardano fundamentals at the beginning versus Solana fundamentals at the beginning and how they're using those fundamentals today. Those are the main differences between Solana and Cardano. It's up to you to decide where you want to be. Maybe you want to hold a little bit of both because you like decentralization. You like that slow review, peer review thing, but you don't want to hedge all your bets in one chain. Maybe you also want to hold a little Solana or if you like an NFT project, you want to grab an NFT from Solana or you want to grab an NFT from Cardano. Both of these chains do these very well, all right? So hopefully that breaks down kind of the core ideas of what makes these two chains different. Solana, a little bit faster, a little bit more partnerships, a lot more VCs, and that can be good, right? You can have people developing the chain from an entrepreneurial side. Cardano, a little bit slower on the TPS and transactions, a little bit slower in development due to the peer-reviewed process, but maybe you want a more science-backed, fundamental, decentralized starting point to work from. That's who you are if you want to join Cardano, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you provide some value and broke down this Solana versus Cardano debate very well for you. We will see you in the next video.